Okay, so I think I might have just had like the coolest Minecraft related experience of my entire life. And and yes, I think this even beats the time I was role-playing the Onceler in my Lorax themed Minecraft server. <laughs> oh wait, forgot to do the theme song. Uh hey everybody, welcome to And uh, today, I present to you Klongcraft. So I was introduced to Klongcraft by a longtime subscriber, MX, many moons ago, and after I found out what it actually was, I knew I needed to experience it and make a video for it at some point. It took a while for my schedule to line up with the people who run it, but finally I was able to actually like join in on the glory of the experience. So what is Klongcraft? Essentially, Klongcraft is a language immersion Minecraft server, but one in which no natural language is permitted to be spoken, but rather a language developed in the server entirely verbally. Like you play the server with a proximity voice chat mod enabled, and you're not allowed to speak any language from the real world, whether natural or constructed. Like you meet up with the people who are already in there, and from that moment, you have to rely entirely on like human interaction to learn the language and communicate with the locals. They do give you three hints in the form of three 20-ish second videos on the Klongcraft YouTube channel. E. E. It's just kind of uh, But, as I would find out pretty quickly, those hints were really just a drop in the bucket that wouldn't even be remotely helpful to me until I'd already been immersed for over an hour. Like, I didn't even realize I was using those words <laughs> that they gave as examples in the beginning until, like, well into it. And, uh, yeah, you, you heard me correctly. I was truly immersed in this language by the time my two and a half hour playing session was done and I was dropped into this world with no context other than those three hints. The, uh, the leaders, Aino, Gigonio, Guis, and Nomis uh, in invited me to take notes as I went along. So I had my iPad out and I was desperately scribbling notes down and like crossing things out as I increased the context and I was led to realize that what I thought a word meant at first was actually just like slightly different or completely different and I had it completely wrong. I, I, I filmed my Minecraft window and my face and my iPad screen to get the most accurate live language learning process on tape as possible. But unfortunately I cannot show you the iPad notes that I took because the grammar of the language in the server cannot be leaked, lest the outsiders get early hints as to how the language works that would give them an unfair advantage over other learners. There's pretty much a no meta rule in this server. You're not allowed to do anything with this language outside of the spoken communication inside the Minecraft server, including no romanization, orthography, or anything like that. Um, we'll get into the communication process. But yeah, I can only show like just like a blurred image to show how chaotic and full my notes page was by the time the two and a half hours had passed. <laughs> it was uh, it was quite a lot. I, I, I was like trying to figure out the grammatical system and everything at the same time. So while I can't give hints about how this language works, 
that would give you like an unfair advantage if you joined. I am about to show you some clips like highlighting the my, my progress learning the language in the world in real time. And I swear, like my brain was operating at like full full big boy RAM capacity the entire time from start to finish. It, <laughs> it might be the nerdiest thing I've ever done and I loved every moment of it and I think a lot of you would too. <laughs> No, yeah. Do you see? Do you see? Uh, no, 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 so yeah, after I installed the uh, voice chat mod via Fabric for Minecraft 1.19, I dropped into this world in the middle of like a nice little town that had a whole lot of banners with cool designs painted on them. And within a few seconds, I heard a, a swarm of voices shouting things I did not understand at all, mixed with Agma, Agma, Agma. No, no, no. there, there was no English allowed, so what the locals needed to do as quickly as possible was find a way to get me to understand some of the most basic concepts. They started off by showing me wood, stone, and dirt, pointing each out using surprisingly effective like Minecraft head-turning body language by like tapping the blocks or you know the head movements or being very emphatic and emotional with their voices. Pretty freaking quickly I knew a few vocabulary words and next they did their best to teach me like personal Deeksis words like I, you, they, it, etc. Took me a little bit to realize that the words they were trying to teach me were deictic words and not about some kind of concrete idea related to like where I was standing or something. But <laughs> eventually I got it. And once I got it, these phrases would be crucial for identification, copulas, and much more. <laughs> you see? You see? He, he, I know. He, I know. You, go no. No. I, I pretty quickly learned yes, no, and uh, their phrase for not bad or good job during this early stage of the journey. Um, next they show me a few verbs. They tried to teach me the verb to have back at the start, but I didn't realize it was a verb until later, so I was just kind of confused. The first verb that made me understand how verbs worked was uh, sleep because the sun was setting and everybody started shouting pronouns along with the word that definitely meant sleep or bed or both. Uh, yeah, probably both, depending on its position in the sentence. Um, and after they slept through the night and it became daytime again, the locals could tell that I was onto something. They then started to teach me how to ask questions. Again, Minecraft body language and vocal inflection was crucial for me to figure out how to understand how to say, what is this? And it took me a while to finally get it, but when it clicked, I was super satisfied. Because soon after, I learned the word to know or to understand, and now I could say something along the lines of, I don't know what this is, what is it? And that was a game changer. From, from there, I was able to become much more active in my own learning process. I started going around just asking for vocabulary words, pointing at things, and uh, pairing actions with said vocabulary words to learn about verbs. Like starting with water and then learning from the locals what the verb to swim was. And I learned how to talk about placing blocks, breaking blocks, helping people and hurting people, which involved a rather violent demonstration. Wow, 
Okay, but okay, keep going, okay, keep going. Go go. Go go. Wow, ba. Wow, ba. G out Cuba. What? But do for a I learned some animal words, how to say this, that, and describe houses as like good or bad. From there I pretty quickly learned like possessive or maybe genitive or maybe both particles to assign belonging to particular houses. And again, my brain was running on all cylinders, but it was a rush that I really enjoyed. Like, it, it was it was a solid like dopamine hit going on that whole time. Every time something clicked, oh, it was good. It was it was good. I, I I should also point out that each local had like a slightly different pronunciation of words. Like the, each each one had an idiolect, which also, since it's like a small scale, technically counts as a dialect. And I ended up learning to speak with some kind of understandable allophonic average of what they were all teaching me. And I was desperately trying to keep some semblance of a consistent romanization with my notes, with guesses as to like the underlying phonemes as I heard new sounds come from their mouths for the first time. While now I could probably draw a pretty accurate phoneme table for this language, by halfway through my session it was still very much like in flux in my head. <laughs> so I, I also learned like pockles and plurals by describing the mass quantities of cows and sheep that they had in their farms. And finally I was able to learn how to count and point out numbers. The next big challenge came to me when the locals tried to teach me constructions for commands and the concept of giving. Like, it took me way, way too long <laughs> in retrospect, but I mean, can, can you blame me? I was dropped into like this whole other world. Um, so for, like for a while, I thought the phrase, thank you, meant I have meat because they were trading around a piece of raw mutton. Uh, do, 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 um Oh I'm I'm Oh. Sometimes my failed attempts at communication really made the locals digitally facepalm, I could tell, but they all kept an amazing attitude and an enthusiasm for teaching that kept me inspired the whole way through. It's almost like they've done this before. Hmm. Hmm. I still didn't truly understand how to talk about giving and thanking yet. So they toured me around, giving me some fresh vocabulary and frequently asking me, do you understand X? And I would say, yeah, I understand X. You know, most of the time, <laughs> our walk through the town ended after I learned the name of the city and we found ourselves at this library looking building. And the library was lined with banners, each one with a unique pattern some of the banners I'd seen before. They used a word that I learned earlier, the word for speak, talk, or say, and were pointing at banners saying, this banner says X, this banner says Y, and so on. And that that's when I had like my certified, like Jimmy Neutron style brain blast. Like, like those banners were part of a written language, a logography, I assume, though to be fair, I don't know the intricacies of it, so for all I know, each element within a banner's pattern could represent a different phoneme, but I wasn't able to pick up on that the short time that I was on the server. But now, a local could point at a banner, say this banner says X, then walk over to item X and say this is X, right? This was a huge turning point because now I could ask questions based on visual representations and get a concrete answer. I, can I read the banners? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. But something about the fact that I could 
ask questions, and learn based on abstractions really solidified the basics of the language in my head. Like, from that moment, like, suddenly everything just really kind of settled in in my head. Now, it was getting late for some of the, the, the European locals, and so I learned how to say goodbye, and thus hello as well. Which, in retrospect, I should have figured out that that's what they were saying right in the beginning, but whatever. Um, after this, I was, uh... <coughs> <coughs> After this, I was finally able to learn to talk about needing, giving, saying thank you, and saying you're welcome. This was like the last big lesson that I learned while I was on Clawcraft, but once it was just me and Gagonio left, I was told how to describe our world by being introduced to the nether and to the end. So now I could describe a large and uncountable concept, the world. So. Yeah, well, once our adventure to the end was over, Gigonio and I said our goodbyes in the language, and it was done. So I, I jumped in there technically knowing three words, but effectively knowing nothing at all. And in about two and a half hours, I had a vocabulary list of about 50 words, probably more, and knew how to describe myself in relation to others and how to ask questions to get the rest of the vocabulary and the grammar of the language later on. My brain was still running at full steam, and I felt super accomplished. Also, uh, I never learned how to toggle the voice chat mod to be sound activated and not key activated, so <laughs> I had my pinky holding down the caps lock key for over two hours, and I desperately needed to get off the computer right after I got off of there. Like, like how was I supposed to ask a question? Like, hey, how do I turn off the push-to-talk setting in a fully immersed Minecraft cultural exchange? Uh, but, uh, oh well, it's too late for that. So, after all that, you might be wondering how something like this could begin. So, I asked the creators, and uh, turns out none of these guys were there when it began. The, the, they're kind of like the second generation of leaders. Hey, Hello. Yeah, ma'am. Hello. Hello. How's Hi. it going? My, my, my fellow Clongcraft people. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes indeed. Um. <laughs> So, it has been about, what, like, a week and a half since our, uh, since, since I was dropped into, uh, the shadow realm of our magical world. How many of you were here since the beginning of Clongcraft? Are any of you, like, OG? I think Gigonio is, like, the only one. Gotcha. Uh, I don't even think, I don't even think he was here from day one either, to be honest. Well, yeah, he wasn't there from day one, but he, he was from pretty early on. How, how long have you been around? Were you there from the start? Um, I wasn't there in the first week, I think. Gotcha. Uh, um, around day six. And by then, the, in the entire server was already in tiny little groups. So like, it started with one proto-language, but after a week already, it was already Wanaoma, Pivdov, um, uh, what are the other ones, Pave, Achiel, um, Majelak, all that kind of tribe things. Also, it's important to note, and they mentioned this in the interview a few times, this is actually season two of Clawcraft. So season one went on for a long time and the language developed until there were multiple dialects, actually multiple entire languages, and a traceable evolution of the phonology and grammar. Well, I actually came in speaking Iftofash with Gagonio. And in fact, it wasn't even Gagonio that was my first teacher. Um, it was a girl called Ursa, my first teacher. Um, and then Gagonio came swooping in with like full chaos, like <laughs> no turning down his speech at all for me. And I'd only had like, I think an hour of exposure at this point. <laughs> so I was a bit like, whoa. <laughs> so which dialect did you speak? Um, I spoke Pivdoff, 
which went through a lot of revisions because I was kind of crazy. <laughs> um, and that's the, of, like, that's kind of like the main one, isn't it? Like the after that, after the Winelma purge, that's kind of like the the most prominent one, the peefed off. That's what yeah. people talking about the most. Yeah, um, after um, when I got nuked, um, not a lot of languages survived because people kept getting busy and then you have no one to talk with. So Pave died, Majilak died, um, Achiel, Pivdov were still active. When Taputa broke off from Loka, the word changed to Kepi without the Kh. And this was because the people of Taputa had decided that Taputa isn't allowed any consonants in the coda of syllables. This was decided on a bit too much of a meta level, and was decided in English. This really should not have been allowed to happen, and Taputa was a mistake. Yeah, no meta. They do not like it when you go meta. You're not allowed to go meta. Yeah, we, we were conlanging actively. <laughs> and gotcha. Uh, that was why Tetro, the original owner and creator, uh, had some conflicts with us. Uh, we thought that it, it was kind of necessary to at least somewhat push the languages, but I think we did do it a little bit too much. Yeah, I think we learned a lot from the first season. We spent a while talking over, okay, what should we do differently? What have we, what can we take away? What didn't work so well? What worked really well? And so that, that's how we sort of come in with season two, sort of start, starting parameters, if you will. I think the steps we took in terms of introducing the first couple of words that we had um, were quite different from the first season, where people got to sort of translate the words with, you know, clear translations. Mm. Um, the way that we set it up by giving people the video to interpret their own definitions of the words um, going in. I think I that really like that. That, that, that was yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I didn't know that it existed until five minutes before I was supposed to log in. <laughs> like, have you seen the videos? And I was like, uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might not have been uh, clear about that, but it's not like something you must watch before playing. It's yeah, something yeah. that we started off with, and yeah. now it's not really necessary because it's not necessary to know them to start uh, learning the language we use right now. Yeah, like I didn't even realize that I was using a, like a couple of those starter words until like an hour and a half into me already <laughs> learning the language. Then it clicked. I was like, "Oh, I've been using that one this whole time." Okay. <laughs> we have the banners and all the beautiful banner memes of the yeah. Star Vault. Now, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Now we decided to just remove writing in existing characters completely to see what will happen. Basically. And I think that was the yeah, best. Um, like that, yeah, yeah. that that was like such a brain blast moment when y'all brought me over to that like library building and then just started pointing to each banner and then being like, Yup, this is a flower. And that was like, Oh my god. <laughs> my 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 brain, my mind was shattered in that moment. Cause like I was seeing those banners all over the place. But I figured they were just like, oh yeah, th those are just like the, the color and pattern themes of this town or something. Yeah, and then you start to learn banner, you can start reading and writing in it. And then you can start asking things in the Discord, you can start making memes, which is like the most fun thing ever. <laughs> I love it, because like, it's, it, it's like... Even though it's like in the Discord server, it doesn't break the meta. It's almost like you, as the Minecraft characters in the world, are then like communicating on Discord with each other, <laughs> like in, in in an in-world like Discord, and just like sharing shit posts and memes with each other. And it's glorious. Like I don't know what any of them say, but like <laughs> it's just glorious scrolling through them and seeing like the meme templates or like pictures of certain people just with <laughs> just banner text spammed all over it.
<laughs> so good. Mostly, it's, it's mostly just shit posting. <laughs> like, we have a lot of phrases. I don't know if you like a lot of funny phrases in this language that we keep repeating over and over again. And that's mostly the phrases we put on those memes. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that makes total sense. I, I, I remember a few. <laughs> These babies were eight dollars at Buffalo Exchange. I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting my use out of them. Anyway, so if you join the Cloncraft Discord server, you'll be able to see all the cool grammar and every element of Season One Peeftoff language and all the other languages of Season One written down and you know documented pretty well. But for now, it is forbidden. Point at you with my trombone. It is forbidden to publicize any documentation for the current season 2 language. <laughs> no meta milk. <laughs> the no meta milk. <laughs> like, I don't even know what the season 2 language should be called, and I don't think they would want that info publicized even if they did know. So that's why I'm not going to include like the IP straight to the server in this video, but I will be including the link to the Discord server the Clongcraft Discord server in the description and from there you will get acquainted with the players and the leaders and you can begin your language learning experience. They got a whole guide on how to do on like which Minecraft version, how to install fabric, how to install the voice proximity mod, links to the the three secret words. Um, I mean, well, the three non-secret words, more like, um, yeah. But yeah, they've been experiencing a bit of a lull in activity lately, so I'm really hoping that this video and a potential influx of players with more free time than I have will increase the speaker base and speed up the evolution of the Season 2 Cloncraft language significantly, right? So then someday you could be around for the finale of Season 2 and be there for the start of the hopeful Season 3. Only then will documentation about the Season 2 language be permitted to be officially written and standardized. But for now, every player is restricted to their own personal and mostly handwritten notes, all to create the most naturalistic and authentic Minecraft language learning experience possible. Alright, well, I mean, I think we've covered most of the bases. Does anyone have any other things that they want to announce to the world before I end the recording? Join us. <laughs> Welcome, it's fun. Yeah, what else can I say? How can you be? Ah, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, people, don't be afraid when your brain melts on the first session oh. because that's what happens to everyone. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, my yeah. brain was very much melting. <laughs> yeah, brain soup. I mean, it even melts awesome. like trying to teach people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm yep. sure. I'm sure. I'm sure y'all had an interesting time trying to get me through like the first step of talking about <laughs> concepts. It must have been a relief the second I was able to ask a question for the first time. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Sometimes things seem so simple until you see someone struggle with them. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean. I think you did. <laughs> I think you did a very good job. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you, thank you. To two and a half hours, and I, I got a good amount of words and the basic grammatical structure in there. You know, it was, it was good. Mm -hmm. You know, and comparatively, that that's the, you know, I don't, I've never been dropped somewhere in real life with no <laughs> possible sources of, of like help except for the native speakers like that. You know, like I've taken classes. <laughs> and then gone somewhere and then spoken the language, you know, places with textbooks and things, but mm -hmm. this is just like, boom, dropped on a new planet, uh, native speakers like, telling you how to live. Yeah, it's a bit like you're suddenly a field linguist, um, <laughs> yeah. just sent out to this uncontacted tribe of people. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's super cool. So yes, audience people do not... Do not be afraid. It, definitely try it out. You know, you you if you're enough of a language nerd to be a subscriber to my channel, then there is a very high chance that you will enjoy this experience. And please, no meta. 
there. But remember, no meta. Meta bad. Meta, meta bad. horrible. Meta bad, meta evil. Stay away. No. We have a no orthography um, emoji <laughs> that we spray people with. I, I actually I actually was thinking about getting a real bottle and writing it on there. <laughs> spray. Turn, turn on your webcam or something. Just spray the camera. No meta. No meta. <laughs> Oh, uh, legendary. Yeah. Join us. <laughs> if you have the free time and a desire to learn a language, I highly recommend trying this out. It would be a shame if such an awesome, organized effort to organically develop languages in Minecraft kind of fizzled out. So I'm really hoping that this video will find some people who do have said free time and said desire. And summer vacation is coming up, so a lot of you are probably already starting summer vacation. And look at that, you might just have a little bit more free time than you used to. Hmm. 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 Ooh, strategic timing, huh? Again, I'm going to include that Discord link in the description so that you can join in on the fun. Like, this is actually the coolest use of Minecraft that I've ever seen. We considered doing something like this on the Agma Schwa Minecraft server a long time ago, but it never really materialized because it's more of like a chill vanilla server with a, you know, an enormous scheduled metropolitan area that's gradually being built. Um, when I found out that Clongcraft was real though, I was like hyped beyond recognition because it was like the exact kind of thing of my fantasies. So. So uh, definitely give it a try if you have the time and the commitment. So like, trust me, if, if you're paying attention, at least to the same level that I was, you'll learn to communicate with the locals much quicker than you might think, like much quicker. And then just like that, you'll be speaking an organically developing language, living entirely and solely in Minecraft. It's, it's kind of crazy. It, it's an experience you can't really get anywhere else. I, I mean, I mean, you could put yourself in a situation where you just like travel to another country where you have absolutely no context. Oh. But you'll still know that like there are sources for said language on the internet, you know, unless you're like falling right into the uh, Sentinelese Islands or something. <laughs> like this, this exists entirely and solely in Minecraft. It is fully organic. There's no help for you. <laughs> like, I wasn't sponsored or anything. It's just like a chill server with some cool people doing like a really, really cool idea that I wish I had the free time to do. So, yeah, thanks to MX for uh, introducing me to Clongcraft. And thanks to Aino, Gigonio, Gui, and Nomis for being such lovely locals and willing to teach a newcomer like me. And uh, thank you all for subscribing, uh, you know, liking the video, uh, doing the algorithm things, and uh, maybe even becoming a patron over on patreon.com slash oh, oh, oh. Uh, a kind welcome to our newest patron, uh, Real Kalopolis. Thank you for supporting my quest to uh, inch ever closer towards a net positive income from this channel. <laughs> I think I'm still around like, I don't know, negative $300 or something over the past three years. I don't know. I'm getting closer to zero though, so that's good. If you become a Natron, you'll get to be in the secret Discord chat, you'll get insights into what's going on behind the scenes, both YouTube-wise and just like in my life in general. You can chat with me whenever you want, ask for advice with conlanging and creative projects and stuff. You can suggest video ideas whenever you want, and we can have conversations about it to determine whether it could become a reality. <laughs> um, also, I've got a whole like full-length video available only on Patreon with some more chill like little mini videos on there too. Also, there's uh, some like there, there's some fun videos that I'm gonna call Klong Vlongs plan to come out in the future. Um, yeah, th this is the first video in over a month because I was working on finishing the comic before I hit the one-year mark of drawing the official artwork, and it's finally done! That's right! So that means that the comic should be available soon to, like, read on ng.org. I'll, I'll definitely be making a video whenever that's actually done. Also, developments on the card game are 
very much underway. It's like awesome. <laughs> Go check out my second channel, The Veeler Nasal, to see some gameplay sneak peeks. Life has also been just like real chaotic lately. Like boom, things came in hot all at once. Like, you, ever, you ever feel like uh, you ever feel like you're like the main character of of like a, a, a serialized TV drama, and you just had like a big season finale where like all these plot points kind of wrapped up nice and smooth, and it's like ah, good smooth sailing, good times, and then uh, then the season premiere comes, and then suddenly you just get smashed instantly from your idyllic piece to with just like a whole bunch of crazy stuff that vaguely relates to the theme of your life that just all happens at once and just completely knocks out your momentum no okay um yeah until next time nga is out join clone craft bye <laughs>